The last story in the kindergarten program is Dylan and the New Playground. Now, before I begin this story, because of the activity that will follow, I usually say to them, I want you to watch the pictures very, very carefully because later I'm going to ask you to match up some of the pictures that were in the story and tell me which one came first. So Dylan's teacher tells them, you know, the first day of school, they can play inside. They can't play outside because they have some very old playground equipment. And when Dylan's mom comes to pick him up at the end of the day, she says, did you have fun? Did you play outside? And he says, no, we weren't allowed to because the playground equipment is not very good. It's not safe. There's also some trash on this playground. So you can see it's been abandoned. And I asked the children to look carefully at that and tell me why they wouldn't want to play in this playground. And sometimes they'll say it's dirty. And that's good for them to recognize because they don't want to dirty their playground. So the teacher says, we need to do something about that. Let's see, if, what do you think? Let's come up with some ideas to s raise some money to put in a new playground. And so somebody says, let's sell chocolate bars. And that sounds like a great idea, except the second grade is already selling chocolate bars. And so the teacher eventually suggests to them, let's do a reading program. You can get paid for reading or having someone read to you. And they'll say, well, who's going to pay us? And so the story is that their parents or friends or family can read to them or they can listen to the child read. And for every minute that they read, they earn a penny. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Dylan goes home and his mom and he sit and read for 10 minutes. So I'll ask the children how much did he make? 10 cents. The next child and this is something that I learned late in the game, is Jesse. <coughs> Excuse me. And Jesse's mom is blind. And so the picture shows that Jesse's mom is reading to her in Braille. And so you can see her fingers are on the book, but children have no idea what Braille is. Well, I found in my local library, and probably you can find it in yours, that you can easily take out a book in Braille and bring it in for this lesson and let them feel what Braille feels like. And so I've done that, and even the teachers and I had not really been experienced with Braille before. So I brought that book in, and they all got a chance to feel it and talk about it. They didn't understand even the concept of blind. They think that you have your eyes closed. They may, some of them might know that you can't see, but they don't know what that means. Because if your eyes are open, as hers are, they assume you can see. So you might have a discussion about being blind. Your eyes just don't work. And so you can't see anything. So, Jessie and her mom read for 20 minutes, and they made 20 cents. <clears throat> this is a cute picture of Dylan and his grandfather reading, but not really. The kids all kind of giggle because they know they're sleeping. <coughs> Excuse me. And eventually, they all go back to class with all the money they've earned from reading and being read too. And they have lots of money, and they put it all in a jar. And at the end, they get new playground equipment. And the school is very proud and excited about how hard they worked and how wonderful the playground was. And we talk once again briefly about how clean it is and how we keep things clean. So the activity this time is to put the story in sequence, in proper sequence. Now once or twice, to be honest with you, I've looked at the pictures and thought, okay, this one was first and that one was second. but. Um, no, if you look at the story carefully, you'll know. And of course, your teacher manual will also remind you of the proper sequence. So, um, you know, there's a picture of the children with the new playground equipment, Dylan with his mother reading, Dylan telling his mom that he can't play outside on the old equipment, and finally the teacher telling them about the program that they can, you know, that they can do to try and earn some money. Now, at the end of this program, or this activity, I should say, one of the most exciting things for the children is that this is the gift that they get. And the gift is a copy of the big book we've been looking at every week, but there's something missing. And so I ask them to take a good, they're so excited, they're looking at it and they're looking at it, and I'll say, no, what's missing in this book? And after a couple of minutes, somebody will realize that there's no words in it, except for the title of each story. There are no words, and I said, exactly. So now you need to go home and tell your families all the stories we've been reading and 
tell them about all, all the things you've learned in our stories. So they go home with all kinds of presents for that day, as well as their certificate. And once again, I usually try to have a real little mini graduation, which is a fun thing for them as well. So at the end, they get their little booklet, and then I'll say, now nah, I'm going to have a real, do you know what graduation is? It means you finish school. They, some of them know that. So I will call them one by one, and they'll come up to the front, and I'll say, when each child comes up, let's say, congratulations. And you know, so they all get a charge out of hearing their names called, and they come up, and they are so proud. And then I'll ask them to take it with their right hand shake my hand so they learn which hand works. But anyway, they love to get this because it has their name on it, just as their name sign. And they also love the fact that today you get to keep your little name tent and you bring it home. <laughs>